Hi. Very good morning. I'm Dr. Janak Patel, MD, general physician. All my video lectures are mainly for educative purpose. In continuity with the previous lectures. Today we'll be discussing on the difference between cord equina lesion and conus medullaris lesion. These are the two separate conditions which produces a damage to the lower part of the spinal cord. So we'll be discussing on the that heading that is cord equina and conus medullaris syndrome. Now to explain that particular part, there are different portion of the lower part of the spinal cord. We call epiconus, conus medullaris, periconus and cord equina. Cord equina is a 10 pairs of roots starting from L2. So four lumbar, five sacral and one coccygeal. All those roots together in the lower part is called cord equina. While conus medullaris is the portion, last part of the spinal cord, which is mainly con containing S3, S4, S5 and coccygeal 1. While epiconus is a portion above this, that is from L4, L5, S1, S2. And epiconus plus conus medullaris is called periconus. So these are the different portion of the lower part of the spinal cord. So conus medullaris is between S3, S4, S5 and coccygeal 1. That portion of the spinal cord. And as far as the vertebral body level is concerned, it is at L1 level. And above that, we call epiconus. Epiconus plus conus medullaris make it periconus. And this roots is called corda equina. So it is con containing totally 10 roots pair. Right from lumbar 2. Right from lumbar 2. So lumbar 2 onwards up to coccygeal. All those roots together that is called corda equina. Now at that level, you can get lot of different conditions which can produce a damage to conus medullaris or cord equina, like meningomyelocele, congenital dermoid sinus, congenital midline tumors like dermoid, epidermoid, teratomas, lipomas, etc. Or infective pathophysiology among acquired group, infective pathology, pathophysiology like sarcoidosis, cystosomiasis, abscess, particularly in traumatic injury, roadside tra traffic accidents, fall from the height, penetrating injury, degenerative disorders, particularly central disc prolapse, neoplastic, particularly primary variety like neurofibroma, meningioma, or maybe secondary metastasis, vascular AV malformation and iantrogenic during anesthesia, particularly spinal anesthesia, or while doing orthopedic procedures or neurosurgical procedures. And in case of a lumbar arachnoiditis following radiculograms, these are some of the conditions which can produce damage to this lower part of the spinal cord. The most common cause for cord equina syndrome is herniated lumbar disc tumor trauma. This comes topmost on the list. Occasionally epidural hematoma or abscess. Or you can get infections. Antrogenic while doing lumbar puncture or while spinal anesthesia. And there is one condition which is involving the spinal vertebral column of lumbar. We call spinal canal stenosis. So that can compress the lower end of spinal cord, including cord equina.
there are few symptoms which are very peculiar in that those groups we call pain deep sharp pain which is constant and variable another variety may be constant variable deep and dull aching pain third group numbness along with pain fourth group constant non variable and there is a saddle dumbness numbness in the saddle area and tingling and fifth group constant non variable and tingling in the lower limb so this will be the different types of presentation in those groups there are some red flag signs like unrelenting night night pains history of malignancy or recent infection unexplained weight loss or unexplained weight gain recent trauma bladder involvement particular difficulty in maturation involvement of the anal sphincter in the form of fecal incontinence saddle anesthesia and gait disturbances that is one of the thing which is in favor of that is bladder involvement fecal incontinence saddle anesthesia and gait disturbances indicates more in favor of coda equina syndrome so red flag signs and white signs red flag definitely bilateral radiculopathy and progressive neurological deficit is in favor of definite red flag sign possible loss of sensation in a perianal region impaired anal tone re resulting into fecal incontinence and urinary disturbances while white signs meaning urinary retention incontinence fecal incontinence and perianal anesthesia they are called as definite white flag sign so they are <coughs> divided into two groups red signs or red flag signs and white flag signs for coda equina syndromes if we go through the common difference between the two that is coda equina and conus medullaris conus medullaris is the lower end of the spinal cord which is consisting of a sacral as well as coccygeal segment while coda equina is a 10 pairs of roots right from lumbar 2 onwards to coccygeal so that is coda equina so coda equina if there is a damage it will be asymmetrical maybe unilateral and involving depends upon the number of segments involved so onset in case of conus very frequently is sudden and by and large bilateral while in coda equina it is usually gradual and unilateral pain will be less in case of conus because roots are more commonly involved in coda equina so usually it is a radicular pain and good number of time it is a severe pain in case of conus the location of a pain is symmetrical perineum or the thigh region because it is sacral part while in coda equina asymmetrical maybe thigh maybe leg or maybe even back motor loss will be symmetrical in case of conus but less mark while in case of coda equina asymmetrical and more reflexes in conus you will have a absence of ankle reflex because ankle reflex is sacral s1 s2 while coda equina you can have ankle as well as knee being involved depending upon the number of roots which are being involved in case of conus you will have a saddle distribution of sensory defects that is s3 to s5 and it is usually symmetrical so it is bilateral symmetrical and saddle distribution while in case of coda it is saddle but asymmetrical bladder and bowel disturbances are early and marked because bladder and bowel level is s2 s3 s4 so they will be more involved while in case of coda equina it is less common so less mark and it is in the late stage sexual dysfunction that is libido 
erectile dysfunction will be more common in case of conus because they are also again concerned with sacral segment while in coda equina it is less common so this is a major difference between conus and coda equina you should remember that conus is s3 s4 s5 main segment and coccygeal while in case of coda right from lumbar 2 to coccygeal all those fiber lumbar 2 onwards and it is a wide area because it is mainly roots so sparing effect is always there so vertebral level wise conus lumbar 1 lumbar 2 while coda equina is after lumbar 2 up to sacrum spinal level wise sacral cord segments mainly s2 s3 s4 onwards while this will be right from lumbar 2 up to coccygeal nerve roots we have already mentioned conus is usually sudden and bilateral while this is gradual and unilateral radicular pain is more common with coda equina you will have a back pain more in case of back pain more in case of conus rather than in case of coda equina motor is symmetrical and you will have a less mark hyperreflexic and you will have a lower motor neuron type of a damage that is fasciculation and distal part of the lower limb will be more involved while in case of coda equina it is asymmetrical and it is because of a lower motor neuron variety it will be a reflexic paraplegia and atrophy will be more common reflexes in conus mainly ankle jerk is more affected while in case of coda equina both knee and ankle jerk are commonly affected sensory part wise you will have a bilateral symmetrical saddle area as well as perianal area while in case of a coda equina you will have a saddle area asymmetrical and maybe unilateral sphincter disturbances will be more common with conus early and both urinary as well as fecal incontinence while it will be late and little less in case of coda equina importance is more common with conus less common with coda equina so these are the two major difference between the two same thing we have already mentioned vertebral level spinal level presentation radicular pain low back pain motor strength reflexes sensory sphincter disturbances and impotency we have already discussed and as far as sensory is concern in case of conus medullaris you can have a dissociation of the sensory loss while in case of coda equina there will be no dissociation in sensory loss this is in detail difference between the two what we have discussed before same thing what are the reflexes how is the presentation radicular pain low back pain sensory symptoms in case of conus medullaris you can have sensory loss of pain pain prick and temperature that's why we call as dissociation may be there in case of conus medullaris while in coda equina usually it is there is no sensory dissociation so sensory dissociation can occur in case of conus but it is less common or almost no sensory dissociation in case of a coda equina motor symptom we have already mentioned you will have more of lower motor neuron palsy and here you will have a reflexic paraplegia and fasciculations are not so common atrophy may be there but fasciculation is rare that is again because of a disuse atrophy importance is more common with conus it is less common with coda equina emg wise you will see mostly normal in lower extremity with external anal sphincter involvement while you will have here multiple roots level you will have involvement which you can demonstrate by emg in case of conus usually mortality a morbidity is more common while cord coda equina there will be little chance of recovery so this is the main difference between coda and conus medullaris
good number of time this can be asked to you in your oral and you will come across in your everyday practice particularly injury in the lumbar region so you should be aware of difference between coda and conus medullaris so if you are aware of it you will be able to differentiate where it is if it is higher up at lumbar 1 level it will be more in favor of conus and lower lumbar 2 lumbar 3 level it will be more in favor of coda equinalism because spinal cord will end at lumbar 1 and below lumbar 1 you will have a coda equina so they, those will be all roots which will be involved so i feel this will be helpful to you if you like this particular don't forget to press button like subscribe and you can share with your friends this can be asked in your oral can be asked in your theory and you can come across in your everyday practice so do go through this if you got any suggestion please don't forget to mention those suggestion i'll try to improve thank you all for taking out time i know that your time is valuable and i appreciate that you have spent some of the time with me so thank you again see you in next lecture